Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe or follow no matter where you're listening. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. Gentlemen, sometimes you just have to sit down and squatch a movie. What do you think of Harry and the Hendersons? For a movie with a big foot, it gave me a big smile. Oh. Gave me a big old heart on. Don't oh. that, We can't say that. I can't keep being the horny one. No, this is a family <laughs> movie and it was delightful. It's a family movie and something smells like Bigfoot's dick. Great. Oh, it's the goddamn opener with the bunny murders. That's what's oh. family. This is a movie that I remember existing back in the day and it just being on like TBS every Saturday or something like that. Yep. And I just uh, just missed it until the year 2023. I mean, that's a fair point because I remember seeing this forever ago. I remember my family having the VHS copy of this. But I have little to no memory of it. I guess this is my, like, re-first time. You know, when they dunked me in the river again, they slapped me in the forehead, I'm all blessed. I got to see Henry, or fuck, I got to see Harry <laughs> and the Hendersons just one more time again. For what it's worth, you don't need to call him Henry or Harry. What, what it, What's his name? Harry? I just called him Biggie through all of this. Nice. Biggie, dude. Biggie Foot is the man. I was a little lighter on this movie. I thought it was just okay. Ah, uh, I can't give it just okay. Uh, maybe it's the rose tinted glasses. Who knows? I've been watching this movie since forever, and every time I watch it, it's always the same experience. I sit down, I'm laughing and smiling just as hard and just as big as fucking Biggie Foot. <laughs> I I am never gonna take that away from you. I can't say like bad things about this movie because there's nothing terrible. It's just there's some like odd choices here and there. To where, like, it totally interrupts the flow of the movie. Like, I kind of see this movie as, like, not two hours, you know? Like, it yeah. just feels yeah. a little odd. Especially towards the end where, like, things kind of wrap up and it just doesn't feel smooth. See, for me, no. like, I looked at the runtime and I was, like, an hour 50. It's not going to feel like that. It kind of did. It kind of did. But I feel like this could have easily been trimmed down to a tight 90 minutes. And, Agreed. like, it, it was still delightful it was still exactly yeah. what i expected when i watched it but maybe a, just a little bit more heavy-handed on the editing would have served it well but one thing i will say that i absolutely loved was john lithgow i don't know who the fuck else is in this movie but i believe everything john lithgow says he's phenomenal 110 percent right there with you the bond that this man forms with a guy in a fucking big rubber fur suit is incredible and you end up believing it by the end of it from the second they meet and he wants to murder him to the second that he's rubbing his face gently as he sets him free into the wild <laughs> all phenomenal i didn't think about it until after the fact but I, I looked up i went to the imdb page and looked up who played this giant motherfucker brady i'm yeah. sure you know eric do you uh, know i do know you, and it you surprises guys me I, I only got reminded because his name was the last opening credit. I was just like, oh, oh of course. Who else was fucking eight foot back then, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Yeah, uh, this is the same guy that plays the Mr. Predator guy. Our good friend Kevin <laughs> Mr. Peter Predator. <laughs> Mr. Predator. <laughs> That's what he's credited as, I hear. And I have to say, it kind of shows, like, when he's doing the Bigfoot walk in the back of scenes and stuff, clearly referencing that really famous photo, there's just <laughs> something predatory about it and you're just like wait a minute is that a shoulder cannon yeah, yeah dude uh, this guy's definitely a meat eater <laughs> there's a scene near the end when the fur trapper guy is like oh sakura blue and he's trying to run away from bigfoot <laughs> and he's chasing him in the suit the scene only lasts maybe two three seconds at the most but this suit number one looks so good it's amazing and he's running, and they have, like, light foliage maybe scattered throughout, and he's chasing the fur trapper. And that's a genuinely horrifying scene, because he looks scary. That face emotes so well, and it's like, roar! And he's chasing the guy, and you're like, fuck, I would hate for that to be chasing me. It's almost like they right. rigged that suit up to, to be able to, like, have the teeth and gums move or something. I felt like they were coming right at me. <laughs> there's definitely <laughs> There's definitely some, like, remote control aspect to it, but man... I not only do I totally agree, but I had another surprise when the credits were rolling at the beginning. This suit, this whole mechanism, whatever you want to call it, is a Rick Baker creation. I'm like, Ooh. fuck, it shows this guy. Look, this guy is the reason why the Academy Award for Special Effects exists. They created it for him. 
He is the dude. I guarantee it, because the way they hide Kevin Peter Hall's head in the traps of this Bigfoot so they can work the animatronic, I guess the uh, the robotic bits around the eyes and the mouth is fucking brilliant. You can't tell that there's anything different about the body structure. It's oh. amazing. You just don't see that kind of monkey suit anymore. Truthfully, though. So let's set the stage for how this movie really gets going. You've got a family of folks headed up by Mr. John Lithgow, and they're vacationing, camping up in the Pacific Northwest outside of Seattle. And John Lithgow is a hunter. He is a hunter at heart. He's been out there not killing things himself, but teaching his son to shoot his first rabbit. And he is just thrilled. This kid's going to be a serial killer. (laughs) I do like how this movie totally pulls like all the family movie punches almost like the beginning of commando this large thing just rustling through the forest you're like wow that's an intimidating shadow i wonder what that is oh it's just arnold schwarzenegger shoving ice cream into Alyssa milano's face just, <laughs> come on aren't we a cute little family unit <laughs> this is a bunny there kill it it's coming right for us yeah, yeah. john Lithgow is just like that dad he's just like oh my son killed his first rabbit and the son's of course just like i fucking did it i want to do it again serial killer remember dude the, the fucking fact that he drops the line it was him or me straight out of south park <laughs> i was just waiting on okay. just, like bigfoot to step out with john lithgow for a leg <laughs> we have to talk about that line in detail just for a moment because that's the line just before the title card like it's either him or me did it the family movie and it's just like what i like how yeah. during that title crawl we get all these uh cute little cute little animals scurrying across you got the possum you got the the all the little cute little otters the bear cubs you got all of the different genres of gay man and they're just adorable <laughs> <laughs> they are adorable <laughs> and they're they're just adorable but you know they're just there for him to potentially shoot at some point yes. oh that's actually you know what i didn't even think of that they're too busy smacking to a bear or something dude i fucking was rolling just because we had recently watched zombievers and i was like hey honey you see that bigfoot in the street right and he's like yeah babe i see it <laughs> okay i trust you i, I don't think that you do I do love how they don't play any games with, like, how fucking big this is. Like, they're driving an old station wagon, you know, the classic shit with the wood paneling on the side. And when they hit this bear, question mark, like, the entire front, driver's side front end is just all crumpled in. And they're like, holy fuck, I hope it's dead. This station wagon takes so much damage throughout and somehow it keeps on running until the end. So many times these doors get ripped off the hinges and somehow they're just back. Because it's the station wagon from Tremors, all right? They just dug it up. They used it here. They were blaring the golden noties. They hit Bigfoot. <laughs> Dal and Earl get out. And they're like, we got to winch it. And he's like, no, no, no. You're going to tear it all up. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. But I think it takes a little bit more than that. It reminds me of the shitmobile from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> you want some fish sticks? Just knock that shit off. So they strike this animal, and it's laying in the road, this gravel road or whatever it is, not moving. And he walks up to it, John Lithgow, and he's like, it, it's dead. I, I think it's dead. It's Yeah, it, it's definitely dead. You can hear the little kid going, well, shoot it anyway. <laughs> This kid is a psycho. (laughs) No, totally. And plus, come on, kid. He did what he had to do. He poked it several times with the rifle barrel. That's what you do. That's how you tell. That's like an EMT trick. Yes. It's like like putting a thermometer inside your turkey. (laughs) Yeah, right up the bunghole. (laughs) Baby, I can't poke it again. You poke it more twice, you're playing with it. No, that's where you put the stuffing (laughs) in your dick. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah, don't include that. So we strap this big bitch to the hood of a fucking car. Like, he wakes up driving down the fucking road. And this is so good because the hands slap on the window. We get our first look at, like, Bigfoot's face, which, again, looks amazing. He got these big old teeth. And the kid's like, you see those big honking teeth right before they launch him 60 foot like a javelin down the street. (laughs) He just, first of all, the guy's idea is this is a Bigfoot. We got to take him home and make money off of him. He belongs in a museum. There's even, like, a little scene where they take their time to drag this I don't know, 700 pound thing 
on top of the station wagon to tie him there. And for him to just be shot off again, so they got to do it again. You know, just it's they, inferred. <laughs> they set up like a pulley system to get his big ass up there. Exactly. And I do enjoy the fact that, like, after they launch him and they get him back the second time, you said that the idea is to make money off of him. I'm going to be honest with you. If I was driving and I hit Bigfoot, the legendary mythical beast, and I'm looking at it and I don't find a zipper and I don't find a mask, so I'm not a fucking killer. He's coming home, <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> is he going mounted on that wall like all those deer? No, I'm gonna be like, look, who's got 50k? <laughs> You're right. Definitely alert the media because you know for the longest time in this movie, John Lithgow's like, money. This is money, 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 money. I'm just like, you know what? Sell like, him before this, the government fucking snipes me. This is a big, lovable <laughs> creature, or so we find out. This is Bigfoot. This is like a, a mythical. Uh, what do they call it? This is a cryptid. <laughs> this is a cryptid tm yeah <laughs> tm and eric to your point you sell it and fucking get rid of it before the government snipes you and then whenever anyone comes around asking you're like no nah, it was fake <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, 100%. it's not even the government that's coming to snipe you it's fucking french jamie heineman over there yes <laughs> man you're right quebecois heineman it's either that or he's that dude that i reference all the time for the mummy who just owns the prison you know he just gets scared. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to call him either the Quebecer yep. or one half of the amazing French Canadians. Yes, sir. But yeah, this guy's just, <laughs> I guess, living out in the woods, just trying to track this Bigfoot for days. And I don't know how he hasn't found him. He's not like being obscure or anything. He's just like walking across the road, getting hit by cars. He probably should be better at his job than he is, you'd think. Well, as someone who currently resides in Quebec... Collis. Tabernacle. Okay. No, well, Collis is like shit. So all oh, the okay. four people that listen here, they'll be like, hilarious. Oh. <laughs> the four people that listen in Montreal or wherever, Quebec, Canada, anywhere, put it in the comments. Is that funny? <laughs> is there a special French LOL? If, if there is, put that down there too. What do you get when you take Bigfoot to your house? You get fridge foot. That's what you get. <laughs> Fridge foot. <laughs> I mean, he's been out for a little while. He probably has the munchies, and he's got to go raid the fridge for, like, some milk and donuts or something. It's 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 kind of silly. I know, like, this is, like, the high jinkery part of the movie. You know, we're past the introductions. Now he's just got to get us some shit to make it wacky. The way he rolls in the places is so quasi-disrespectful. Like he like he owns the place, right? It's it made me laugh so much that he rolls into that stranger's house, starts picking through their fridge, and then the lady comes rolling in. He's like, "Oh man, that's a mouse or some shit." Like I know it comes much later, but like when that lady finally figures out what's in front of her, it's no longer that family friendly Harry and the Hendersons. It's that ridiculously scary horror movie Harry kills the Hendersons. <laughs> Because she fucking smashed his big toe. Disrespectful. He was just trying to get a head of lettuce and maybe a couple bonbons. Maybe some chips and dips. He's super into chips and dips. What I'm trying to say is that Bigfoot went zero to 60 in like a second. And then we start to hear shit like John Wick. Like instead of him killing somebody with a pencil, it's like, they slapped his big fucking toe. And then it's just a nightmare for the town. By the way, I love the neighbor, and I don't actually love the na neighbor. I'm just saying that. She is a carbon copy of the neighbor Agnes from Bewitched. Agna, Agna, the neighbors have a Bigfoot. <laughs> is he fucking short round? <laughs> <laughs> is that what I, I come off as? It was so good. It was just was, good. All right. Uh, oh, uh, man. Uh, but, uh, yeah. The important thing about her is she has a pool. Yeah, and they're just all visual gags. That's the only reason why that pool exists. In fact, I'm thoroughly convinced that her as a character only exists because they needed a goof for shit to get thrown into. Good. And they also needed someone to take care of Rimshot while they were away. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Either that or Wishbone, cute little dog. And I do have to say, he does not deserve the somewhat abuse he gets in this movie. <laughs> he gets, not he at gets all. manhandled. He gets, but he gets flung a couple itty -bitty. of times, honestly. Just straight up flung. But Harry's there to catch the ball. All right? Thank That's you. all that matters. Now, Harry, as you said earlier, 
Eric. He's got all these little hijinks that he gets into, breaking things and tearing walls down to make space for himself because he's a big guy in a little coat. And uh, my favorite bit with Harry is whenever he's in the house and he hits his head on the, uh, what would you call that? The like door molding? Door frame. Yeah. Yeah. Door frame. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck, that's too small. He just takes his hand and pushes it up another two feet, completely destroying the house's infrastructure. And it's like, yeah, that's better. There is no way oh. this house is structurally sound anymore. No, not oh, no, at all. None at all. By the end of it, there's just like holes all over the fucking place. And the fact that Bigfoot, his entire weight was saved by a pool table makes me rethink that entire fucking house, to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a big, nice house, though. They've got, what, three floors and a basement? Think about this, though. Bigfoot destroys it. And if you try to sell it on today's market, it'd still go for a mill. Yeah, 100%. Around here? Yeah. Ooh. And all, how, what does wife do? Is she just a stay-at-home mom? Because all, okay. all he does, all daddy does is work at a gun shop, which yeah. that'll come back to. But that's, what, how does he afford that on his income? Come that's on. the goddamn American dream. It's like the 50s. You, it's like you could just work a, a low-end job and still have a life and a future. Now it's like you got to work three jobs just to have a cardboard box. He can afford it because you guys just brought it up. He works for his dad. That's right. Nepotism. Mm. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh. Yep, That's yep. why all the fellas in the shop were just like, hey, buddy, here we're laughing at our joke, right? Ha <laughs> we're friends, right? Right? <laughs> you mentioned John Lithgow being the only person in this movie that you knew. There are a couple of other actors that I recognize from exactly one <clears throat> role, and one of those is his father. Did you guys recognize oh, yeah. his father? I did not. I re- did. I did, yeah. He's like a character actor. I've seen him in a bunch of stuff, but for some reason, my brain can only think of, oh, wasn't he the conductor from Wild Wild West? <laughs> Damn. Oh, was he? The only yeah. thing that I remember him from, the only thing I remember him from is being in, like, one scene in Knives Out. And that is, like, 30 years past this. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in a ton of 80s stuff, like a lot of uh, Dan Aykroyd and uh, Eddie Murphy movies. He pops up. Speaking of Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy movies, there's another guy in this that I only recognize from one role, and it's a Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy movie, Trading Places. He's one of the rich assholes. Yeah, perfect segue, the, by the uh, way. Yeah, he runs the, the Bigfoot Museum, and I thought this was a bad guy from the start. I thought he was just, like, trying to kill Bigfoot, kind of trying to get him up on the wall, be a moneymaker. Maybe he loves Bigfoot. I don't know. That's Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> oh, bravo, sir. Bravo. Oh, there we go. You gotta, like, edit in some fucking canned applause right there. <laughs> right now. Ah, uh, there we go. But you're talking about working at the gun store, and I think that this is a really fun uh, juxtaposition because we have the hunter who has. The ultimate game, Bigfoot, you know, there he is. And he's got him at his house and he's tearing shit up and he's about to kill him. And he sees that Bigfoot's a a chill dude. Like he's just a fish out of water and he steps into the light and there's like this real, you know, the the music, of course, is setting the scene wonderfully. And the light shines on him. He's got this intent of just like, man, come on, dude. Like, fuck, you done murdered everybody in here. Let me just go bury him in the backyard in shallow graves. (laughs) Yeah. You sure they just weren't paralyzed from fear? You know, like, we love you now. Don't rip us apart. Love you. <laughs> oh, Biggie yeah. is so upset when he goes to pet that, that deer and finds out yeah. that there is no back end to that deer. It did feel like he recognized someone he knew. You yeah. know, just yeah. like, hey, Greg, what's up? <gasps> you <laughs> you lost your arms in battle. <laughs> Greg, you've made some changes, Greg. Greg. And... I, 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 once again, I want to gush over it. The suit and the face animatronics do such a good job. He's got a confused look. He's touching the face. He reaches around the back side of the wall where the rest of the body should be. There's nothing. The eyebrows raise. The mouth goes wide. It's sad. Honestly, the look, at the expression on his face is just like, I feel real bad for him. At that point, I was feeling really tense for John Lithgow because he has no idea where the rest of Greg is right now. <laughs> I just left him in a shallow grave. Huh? <laughs> that was a that was a running gag that I actually really enjoyed. Was that 
whatever piece of meat, you know, had to be not only thrown out, but just buried. Out of Mom, respect. where's the roast? Uh, it's in a shallow grave in the backyard. Fucking solid. And there's so much yeah. of that. And again, going back to the whole dynamic of the family and the, and the fucking Bigfoot. Whenever they're trying to release him back in the wild with the fucking filet o fish, which who wouldn't get in the back of a station wagon with some stranger for filet o fish? But <laughs> we've talked about this. <laughs> I know that we've talked about it. I'll let you guys know. I fucking love a filet o fish. He's like, mmm, tartar sauce. But the child, of course, losing his quote unquote pet is heartbroken. And we get this touching moment once again of Harry sitting in the back of the car that he's stretched with his gigantic peanut head crying because he sees that he's caused distress to his new adoptive family. And he yells like Hacksaw Jim Duggan <laughs> and runs out into the wild. Yeah, they left him alone in the backseat of that car for way too long. It's okay. The windows were down. Damn. Standard was <laughs> but on. it's hot in there, Eric. <laughs> well, that's why he ran off to pillage at poor lady's fridge. And unfortunately <laughs> for her, he took it personally. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we haven't really mentioned the family too much. We've said, you know, we talked about John Lithgow and the son who is definitely going to turn into a little bit of a serial killer. Maybe not a big one. <laughs> maybe not a prolific one. There's the wife who is basically nothing she's a she's yeah. a clear and empty glass in this movie but man this daughter's a piece of work we discussed this a little bit before the show is you know the biggest reason why we don't bring up the family is because they're just family it legitimately feels like oh you're quintessential plutonic wife oh you're the plutonic kids one's a shit one's a little too sensitive Ooh. all right though i do have to say fuck the mom because there was one part where, like, the dog came back and she was like, whatever, it's not Bigfoot or nothing. Oh, Fuck yeah. her. Oh, a little rim shot went running away, I guess, chasing after Biggie. And uh, yeah. a, a little boy gets excited. Oh, he came back. And she thought he was talking about Bigfoot. No, the dog, the family member that you've had for, you know, three years at this point. I don't know how old this dog is. But come on, you've known this Bigfoot ass creature for two days. Look, now I've had my dog for about three years, and I've discussed this with the wife. And I said, hey, look, if we hit a Bigfoot and we brought it home and it woke up and it was this scenario and he was this type of thing. And he is Harry from Harry and the Hendersons with this fucking amazing spirit and this just genuine heart full of love and just enjoying the experience. And he tore my house and car apart and my dog ran away and then it came back, but it wasn't him. I'd be like, oh, Einstein, cool. Hey, buddy, I oh, miss Harry. I'd be right there with him. Like, this is this is like no one else can have this experience. Well, speaking of the Bigfoot experience, this is a barley wine from Sierra Nevada Brewing Company out of Chico, California. This is a 9.6 alcohol by volume. Bigfoot, what else? So much like Harry, this is a hefty boy. This is a strong drink. Uh, very commonly aged, but this one is not. This is pretty fresh. Very malty, but with a strong, strong hoppy backbone. Probably a little bit too strong to drink this fresh, if I'm being honest. This isn't great. Cellar it away for a few years. Let it mellow out a little bit, much like Harry. It's probably going to be a lot better, but... <laughs> As it is, it drinks just a little bit hot for me. Well, speaking of getting a little too hot, Bigfoot is unfortunately acquiring one too many stars in the wanted system. He's poking around the neighborhood just a little too aggressively. Dude, he hits fucking five stars and quick. We get like a fucking super, super copy-paste Jaws hunt the shark scene, and I loved it just because I love Jaws. And then everyone's got a goddamn gun, and we get this different John Lithgow who's selling guns and selling bullets, who's, a, who's like, yeah. he's not a monster. You're a son of a bitch. Fuck you. Bigfoot's a good guy. You don't need to shoot him. I like how the dad was just like, hey, you used to draw, right? You, you want to draw me a big, nasty, snarling Bigfoot so I can sell more guns, so we can entice people to hunt the Bigfoot? Yeah, do that for me with your little doodles, you little bitch. I was going to say his tone definitely sounded like old time. He's like, hey, remember all that gay shit you did in school? You still do it? I need a favor. <laughs> Can you do me some gay shit? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with the uh, the five star level, 
He's running loose in downtown wherever. He's tearing Seattle. the fucking gates off of stores so he can watch <laughs> television. He's flipping over cars and hiding in dumpsters with winos. Harry, what are you doing? <laughs> he's all over the place. And like I said, he's getting into some trouble. But now he's in some Quebecois trouble because that French Canadian fella is on his tail. I know he's supposed to kind of be the antagonist. But for some reason, the movie's like, what if he's just smelly too? Well, he, he's been hiding in the bush for however long just trying to track this guy. He hasn't showered or anything. Then he gets locked up. And, you know, all the all the other prisoners are like, man, we got to stay away from this guy. He's not dangerous or anything. He just kind of stinks. They were just staying away from him because they're like, this fucking dude got slammed by Hacksaw Jim Duggan in a dumpster. All right. This is fucking sad. <laughs> he's out here doing indie wrestling in fucking parking lots behind Piggly Wiggly. Like, get out here. This guy smells like a Frenchman. And I think he's going to um, myth bust me. Towards the end of it, he was just like a big disaster. Ecological disaster at that. I do appreciate that they left him dirty. Like, the character gets thrown in the dumpster, he gets locked up in jail, he gets set free, he has to steal a car, he chases them all the way out to fucking Mount Rainier, and never once do they clean the gunk off of him. Even at the big final showdown, he's still just covered in, in schmegma. Schmutz. I, I, don't, I don't think that's Schmutz. what it is. What, uh, is that how we know Bigfoot is a boy? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh man, they did wash him, so who knows? Yeah. Oh, he came for his from under du fromage. <laughs> Ooh, throw the sponge away now. Yeah, throw the whole ass pool away. We gotta have that filled up. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a hairball. Yeah. Hey, you I got a like cat? Good. Yes. I guess it's not it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, at least he was worried about. It. Like, you, you sure? Okay. Okay. No problem. We do get a scene, we kind of skipped over it a little bit, but John Lithgow, you know, with concern for Harry, drives up uh, all the way up Route 60 to the Mystery Hole uh, so he can get some information at this Bigfoot Museum. And that's where we run into uh, Thurston Howe the Third or whatever his name is from Trading Places. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we find out, oh, he's actually like a Bigfoot scientist doctor guy or something. Yeah, there's a lot of potential in this character that doesn't seem as fleshed out as it should be. Because, like, you know, he's connected to the French-Canadian. They're best friends, in fact. They used to squatch together before he gave up. And <laughs> yeah. and he's he's lost everything. His family, his career. The only thing he has is this, like, little shitbox Sasquatch place. And, like, th there's a very emotional scene where he's like, Listen, John Lithgow, I was crazy once, too. Bigfoot's not real. Don't give it all up. And then he turns around and sees actual Bigfoot, which, which should affirm everything that he's ever preached in his entire life. The movie just forgets about him. He's just like the plus one for the rest of the movie. He's just with us now. Yeah. Yeah, he gets I mean, to he... cuddle with Bigfoot, and that's all that matters. He fucking grabs a sleeping bag. He has a sleepover with Sasquatch. All right. Sasquatch is listening to Creed on headphones and snuggling. <laughs> this is top tier cinema. You think he's listening to Creed? I mean, I can see it. I can see he it. He had his sure. arms wide open, Chandler. Oh. There it is. I was going to say mm. that or shine down, but you know what? That was worth it. <laughs> see, this guy, you know, he's mostly vegetarian, although he will eat the occasional goldfish or filet o fish but he's mostly <laughs> vegetarian. By the way, there is no way an animal this size consists on celery and goldfish alone. He is dropping calories by the minute. That being oh, said, yeah. like, I always felt that this guy was a little bit more uh, of a Grateful Dead fish kind of guy. Is that just me? Well, I just thought it was just filet of fish and protein powder, you know. Keeps the boys strong. <laughs> the gains. Bigfoot now, biggest foot later. All right. So, fucking <laughs> Bigfoot gets escorted out the Mount Rainier, and John Lithgow's like, go on, you big lug. You can't get foot yeah. loose with us no more. And he tries to <laughs> shove him off into the wild. I almost feel like that scene should last a little longer because he does like, shoo, go on, get. And it even comes down to him like just trying to throw a punch across them just to get the point there. And I kind of wish he would just kind of kept beating the shit out of him just to see like at what point do the emotions run out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, after the second or third punch, I just want him to just like give him a toss off the mountain, just right off of Mount Rainier. Just, Go away, John. Let's go. I don't want you anymore. 
<laughs> See how far quad he can throw him. Oh, nice. But you can tell <laughs> hitting Bigfoot in the face doesn't matter. But if you kick him in his sassnards, then he'll go right oh. down. Yeah, just uh, slap him in the mommy daddy button. That'll turn him off. <laughs> and there's like that little moment too, because like Harry's just kind of like hiding around, and the the family is trying to throw MythBusters off the trail and all that stuff. But then Bigfoot and MythBusters wind up getting a tussle anyways. And like, yeah. mind you, Bigfoot is Bigfoot. And at this moment, having the antagonist in his hand. I'm thinking, okay, where's this going to go? It's a family movie, PG, I know, but this is old PG. Grab his dick and twist it! (laughs) The old dick twist! (laughs) Uh, But unfortunately, no. Uh, Harry is a kind, gentle individual. That's how he got to where he is now, I guess. Yeah, but Bigfoot's such a kind-hearted guy. You know, he he potentially changes the outcome of the psycho killer kid. You know, uh, he takes the Quebecer who's like... I'm going to do a Bigfoot kill you. And he's like, what do I do? Well, the humans taught me whenever something's trying to bite me, I just got to calm it down. So just like little Bill or little Bob or whatever that fucking wishbone dog was called when it was trying to bite him and the mother taught him to pet it. He takes the hunter who is freaking out, trying to beat him up. And is like, don't let Bigfoot kill me. And begins to pet him to calm him down. Insert instantly. Everything's fine. Everyone's okay. Just a couple pets on some deranged psycho killer, and he'll be like, you know what? Say. Maybe I'll go kill Loch Ness <laughs> instead. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You'd mention something about it, everything being all right. This would be the perfect moment to have that fucking gopher just pop up and just sing along to Kenny Loggins and just roll the credits. Fuck it. Well, I mean, you do get a musical exo. As soon as everything's all wrapped up, everyone's high-fiving with the Bigfoot, we get like an aha style music video with the take on me. There's illustrations of Bigfoot coming to life, and there's scenes from the movie that then turn into the illustrations. This is like the second or third time you've mentioned it, and every time you remind me, I'm like, you're fucking right. That's how this movie ends. Once the movie was off for me, like, I just turned it off, didn't think about the credits. I had to go back to watch the credits after you mentioned it, and it is exactly the video for Take on Me, except with scenes from this movie. Like, I don't know who aced their art class with just, like, a thousand pages of Sasquatch art, but congratulations. You know, it was pretty sick, gotta say. They're Harry and the Hendersons fanfic. I mean, is it like uh, Jonah Hill in Superbad, where he's just got, he can draw (laughs) one thing and one thing really well, and that's a dick. (laughs) You know what? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, John Lisko in this movie, uh, he still turns out to be a serial killer because in my mind, you know how in the last movie, Serial Mom, oh. that turns into the kid from Scream? No, John Lisko goes on to be the Trinity killer in Dexter. That's Agreed. My... Yep. Okay, I was yep. thinking something completely different. I thought he was going to go on to be in Cliffhanger and just scream at Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> oh, that's him too. He lived a full life, he did. Eric, to your Lord Farquaad point, think about this. He wrote a character, since he's an illustrator, that wanted to hunt mythical creatures. Hence, Lord Farquaad trying to kill Shrek. So that means Harry is Shrek. Oh. Get out of my Mount Rainier. I don't know why it sounded like that, but whatever. <laughs> and he's got a Scottish accent. He's got a Scottish accent. He was with it's the just... French guy hunting for Nessie. And it's it all connected. Out it's just, it turns out it's just Sean Connery at the Wendy's again. God damn it. Oh. Sir, we don't serve spaghetti. You'll give it to me. You'll give it to me now. <laughs> I don't know. That, that lady called it shkeddy. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero complaints with this movie other than maybe the runtime. It's an hour 50. Whenever I turned it on and I looked at that, I went, wow, really? I don't remember that because for me, my memory holds on to like the first hour of this movie like a vice grip. And then lets a lot of it just kind of slide until the ending, which again, the ending is still kind of weak, but you always remember the end. Other than that, a genuinely good time. It's got that classic Hallmark family vibe with a bit of the absurd with a Bigfoot running around. But they do such a great job of making this creature that can turn from terrifying looking to just genuinely huggable and lovable in two seconds. Five out of five stars, man. Fucking love this shit. I can't take it that far. And there were parts where I felt like this is kind of just 
E.T. with a Sasquatch. And it's it's a bit clunky. I, I really feel like the first act should have had more like, I don't know, it, it's some editing issues that makes the pacing feel weird and the movie kind of feel the two hours. But what I will agree with that it, this is a good movie. It's good hearted. Other than my nitpicks, it's the most inoffensive movie I've seen in who knows how long. Like, I can just recommend it just based on that. And I'll agree with you both. This is just a good, solid movie. It is exactly what I expected. It is a little bit longer than it should be, and there are some editing choices that I would have done differently. Probably needed to start a little bit earlier in the story. But, I mean, overall, I really got no complaints. The visual effects on the costume of Harry, Biggie, whatever you want to call him, are great. Uh, Overall, uh, yeah, real solid. I'd watch it again. Well, there you have it. That was Harry and the Hendersons. If you have any strong feelings about the movie or the show, leave it in the comment section down below. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Be sure to bash that bell icon or its equivalent on your platform of choice so you don't miss what we have brewing up next. Get out there and follow us on your social medias, y'all. We're everywhere. Everywhere podcasts are available. Give us a shot. We're pretty darn funny sometimes. And if you don't give us a shot, we're going to send the fucking amazing French Canadian after you. And he'll be like, oh, give me your from under fromage. I live in the trash can. Need that omelette de yacuche. What? Oh, jeez. <laughs> now I have to cut the whole ass show. <laughs>